the whole truth about the exception regime or state of exception in El Salvador. The exception regime has been criticized by international organizations, but valued by the majority of Salvadorans. 91% of the population supports Nayib Bukele. So, why do the international media want so much to damage the image of this president, or, why do they criticize him so much? I will be direct. The international organizations that speak ill of Booklet, have a political agenda on the part of Washington, which consists of destroying the image of the president, to prevent not more foreigners from arriving in El Salvador and that our country not achieve the goal, to develop. A few Salvadorans know that they are financed, some like El Faro are financed by the Open Society of George Soros. Booklet wants to put an end to the organization of the United States, and combat the internal economic, financial and social dominance of the United States of America over Latin America, which has been very destructive in Latin America. He doesn't hate the United States or anything like that, he has said that he wants to be a friend of the United States, but he doesn't want to be a puppet either. We know that many in the United States are puppets, like the president of the OAS, Luis Almagro, or like Joe Biden himself, and the same thing has happened in Latin American countries, like Lady International who treats us like idiots, or as they have been the previous governments of our country that only stole and did us a lot of damage. They begin to publish any movement that happens in El Salvador that seems bad for the media internationally. Casually, international news only reviews publications such as The Factum, El Faro, El Diario de Hoy, La Prensa Gráfica, etc., which follow the same pamphlet and there is nothing different between them. But they do not review the real news that happens in El Salvador as the newspaper Diario El Salvador. Why don't they interview the majority of Salvadorans? Why do they always interview the few who are protesting an alleged dictatorship? It's chance? It is logical that they do not, it is logical that they only follow those pamphlets because they are financed and they need their salaries. There are already intelligence documents in which the entire Makab plan against the Salvadoran people can be seen, since the FMLN and Arena themselves continued to give weapons to the gang members and wanted the gang members to be the next rulers, and the OAS agreed with that. Paulo Lures was in charge of convincing Arena. In this regime, most of those women that the international news reported in the prison were really financed, why do I say it? How can I have the heart to say that about the poor ladies? Let's analyze something, in the first place, why did the women have papers written by the same type of font? Didn't they write the posters themselves? Well, there is a video which clearly shows and hears that they tell to a lady what the lady should do. Y esto se está viviendo aquí en la Procuraduría, madres desmayándose por las injusticias del gobierno. Qué barbaridad, mano. Esto es muy injusto. Tiene que investigar bien el gobierno quiénes son. No Demasiado, son. están abusando. Why, if the woman is suffering, would they ask her to cry more just because they are recording? Apart from the fact that it looks very fake. But that's not all. The police also asked for her criminal record. And what did most of those ladies do? Most of them never came back. What was it that they hid so much that they didn't want the police to discover? Why not just show them the criminal record so they can see that they are not bad people? The answer is obvious, they had participations with gang members, but it is something that the international media do not show you and they do not want you to know. Another interesting fact, when the FMLN and ARENA governed, the international organizations, and I emphasize that the international organizations and not the people who protested in El Salvador, did not say anything when the gang members attacked a large number of Salvadorans and the human losses that occurred. The only thing they did was just say that this country was plagued by gangs, but they, did not propose solutions, they did not say that we were in a dictatorship, because we were, why do I say that? Because before? Even the police beat people who were just protesting. Only a naive person who sees what is happening does not realize that they are trying to manipulate us, since the pseudo-journalists in my country have also been financed by the FMLN and ARENA.
It's also no secret that they have sexually abused women and have even negotiated with gangs. And now, having clarified how false the international media are, I will begin to clear up some doubts that you may have about this exception regime. Are the police sufficiently equipped and prepared? Yes, they are. The weapons they have are those of the police of the first world, armored cars of excellent quality are also arriving. Why does Bukla no longer support El Faro? This question probably arose because you saw a publication of those from El Faro victimizing themselves. Well, the answer has already been said by him and it has been, obvious, before they didn't follow pamphlets, now they do, because they were bought by the FMLN and ARENA. Apart from being financed by the Democrats of the United States. Among all these pseudo-journalists are copied. Do they kidnap people just because they have tattoos? That is false. The police don't kidnap all tattooed people. They actually kidnap people who have gang tattoos, and if they, don't have tattoos, then they must have a criminal record that clearly shows they have been criminals. Given this, you cannot try to defend criminals when they clearly are. Watch this video where this foreigner tells the truth. Si tú eres turista, no te arrestan. Sí, claro, obvio que no te van a arrestar si eres turista, pero también quién está caminando por los calles de El Salvador con un camisa que dice soy turista o mírame, soy turista. Es solo que los tatuajes de pandilleros se ven, pues, de mías. Los policías ya saben quién están buscando, entonces sí, no hay ningún problema estar en El Salvador con tatuajes. I mean, como les dije, pueden ver cómo tengo el cuerpo yo y hay gente por todos lados hasta con, con tatuajes en la cara y todo bien, todo fino. Why didn't they just pass a law to be able to track gang members? This sounds to me as if with a simple magic wand you could fix all the problems of violence in El Salvador. It was possible, yes, but not so influential in fear, since the gang members were going to continue killing raping and recruiting victims, destroying the lives of many Salvadorans, they could simply have chosen to have other, means of communication, and the police meanwhile without being prepared it would not cause fear, while the privacy of Salvadorans would not have been respected. Why do you think Bukla treats gang members badly in prison? It is not out of resentment, but it is to cause fear to the gang members who are not yet in prison and who, since they are faithful to their homies do not want them to hurt them. A law would not have stopped them from killing so often. It was logical that the exception regime is necessary. It could be that they could put that law in place, but in the most insecure areas and still implementing the exception regime. If there are no social proposals in the face of the crisis, much less prevention, how do they plan to clean up the country? Well, first of all, I must clarify that both education and employment programs have been strengthened. Now, in itself, that assertion of prevent has an analysis with ignorance of several concepts. But ironically it is what most technicians in social networks think. With the same word they use, prevention, they define everything. Actually, when they mention prevention, they have to define that a virus cannot be prevented, when it is already in your body. What do I mean? Because prevention is before. If you remember before a pandemic they told you to take contagion prevention. The virus managed to enter and the next step was to eradicate it in the controlled percentage. El Salvador has to eradicate the problem and now do what should have been done in the 90s. That of preventing that it does not reproduce, again is wrong, and also being such a poor country and with a huge cultural damage, you cannot give a solution to all areas at the same time. When I mention the cultural problem that is very difficult to change, you can notice it in Latinos who live in first world countries and are involved in gangs, even though they are in a highly developed country. Why has Nayib Bukel not said anything in relation to the accusation that El Faro made of him that he has negotiated with gangs? He has said it many times, and this video is proof. Es que digan que aquí se ataca la prensa. ¿Y, y qué están haciendo todos ustedes aquí? ¿Y quién lo golpeó? ¿O les quitó lo, su, su poder de publicar? Ustedes se van a ir ahorita a su redacción y van a escribir lo que quieran. Y van a escribir, en el caso del Faro, una sarta de mentiras del gobierno. ¿Y nosotros qué hacemos? Desmentirlas. Y eso es la violación a la libertad de expresión. Desmentir las mentiras de ustedes. 
O sea que ustedes tienen toda la libertad que la tienen y la vamos a garantizar y nosotros aquí nos comprometemos frente al pueblo salvadoreño a garantizar la libertad de expresión al máximo, al 100% y garantizar la libertad de prensa al máximo, al 100%. Pero ojo, esa es la misma libertad que tenemos todos. Porque ustedes de alguna manera, no todos los periodistas, pero estos, estos grupitos de, de, de periodistas incómodos, que así se autodenominan, Ustedes sienten como que solo ustedes tienen la, el, de, el derecho a la libertad de expresión. O sea, ustedes pueden decir que el gobierno negocia con pandillas. Pero si nosotros decimos que es mentira, y les demostramos que es mentira, estamos violando la libertad de prensa. Ustedes vienen aquí, dimos las preguntas, se ponen a gritar, vengo yo todavía le digo, vaya, pásenle. Todavía me, me trataste de callar cuatro veces. Nadie te empujó, nadie te tiró, nadie te aventó, nadie te quitó la, la, la grabadora, ahí estás todavía. In fact, El Faro's statements lack sense and arguments, but even if so, the voices of the accused are not the same as those of the person who made those audios that El Faro published. Which brings us to the next question, why were there 61 homicides before the exception regime? In those cases there is a lot of material to cut, but before the exception regime, belonging to a criminal structure was not a crime. It was not a crime because despite having symbolic tattoos on the structures, if the crime was not proven, the judges would let you go, therefore, territorial control, depended on some corrupt police officers of El Salvador, who knew the criminals and who did not make a move to capture them, and also the system sometimes let them out. There are cases where no matter how much they denounced the authorities, the authorities did not intervene, therefore, It was a war between politicized unions that defended the corrupt police officers, between judges who benefited, the structures and between the structures themselves. Therefore, territorial control was equivalent to being in the middle of the sea on a raft. Your raft has a hole and you are trying to remove the water with a gourd, no matter how much you remove the water, it will continue to enter and sink you. In the case of El Salvador, no matter how much they captured, They always went free, one went to jail and two came out. It was difficult to stop a murder, because the homicide principle says that someone is a murderer until they commit the murder, so in El Salvador the only way to stop someone was to do it in front of a camera and their face recorded, otherwise, he was innocent, despite the knowledge of the scholars in the area that every member of the criminal structure commits the crimes, mentioned above. There was a procedural legal vacuum that allowed criminal structures to be treated as innocent. Therefore, the only thing left for territorial control was to put one police officer per family in El Salvador as an escort or a soldier per square meter to prevent a homicide. They couldn't fight gangs, only prevent crime. It is as if you had a cornfield and it was filled with a plague, and you could not put poison in it. No matter how hard you try to conserve them by giving them water, if you do not eliminate the plague they will eat your entire harvest. Now the difference that now there are captures to before, is that now being a member of a criminal structure is a crime, having symbols alluding to the structures is also a crime. Something that in the past could not. Now what benefits these arrests is the exception regime, which allows a police officer who knows that a member of a structure lives in X house, to enter to arrest him. Salvadoran journalism and think tanks contradict each other, because they say that the government has, all the tools to stop them without a regime, but it is false. Even though a policeman knows that a murderer lives in X house, he cannot enter to arrest him, because he cannot do so without an order from a judge. Have they really put that many gang members in jail? Yes, you probably thought that it is not true, but actually it is. Since in one day with the past governments we had 60 murders. These large numbers were registered, which until a few months ago were 70 million gang members in the country. I too have seen with my own eyes how they are arrested. What about the innocents that the international news says are in jail? First of all, Most prisoners are gang members. Secondly, others say they are innocent, because they have not been gang members, but they have collaborated with gangs, that is the problem. As there are also others who claim to be innocent but in the past they have been gang members and currently they have only remained inactive, so that does not erase the past and all the damage, they have done. I will explain to you what the judicial process is like for defendants, 
we are talking about diligence or exceptions, therefore, thorough investigations are made. Many filters are usually made in which they go through judges if the police suspect them or have already denounced them or have a criminal record. If almost all the judges say that you are a gang member, you have a low chance of being told that you are innocent. It's 15 days of investigation, and if you're innocent, they'll let you go. However, sometimes the system fails and that few percentage has to wait. Of course, there have been cases in which the police turned out to be corrupt or that they were part of these terrorist groups, but they have ended up in prison as well, so that they no longer harm or arrest an innocent person. And here I must clarify something regarding a damaging and against argument towards the government that those from El Faro often make, according to what those of El Faro say, Bukley hasn't extradited gang members to the United States, which is false, because what those of El Faro are doing is as an argumentative reservation, well, although not even that, but a transitivity so, that the blame falls on Bukley, why do I say it? What do I mean? That for the blame to fall on Bukley what they do is the transitivity of how the Supreme Court of Justice did not authorize the extradition and the Court of Justice was put by Bukley, then Bukley is to blame according to those of El Faro. They blame Bukley for the non-extradition to the United States, when in reality, the extradition corresponds to the judicial body and not to the executive body, which means that the fault does not lie with Bukley, because it corresponds to the Supreme Court of Justice and not him. So the stupid argument they use is if Bukla was fighting the gangs, then he would extradite these gang members, but I repeat, that is not up to him. And the second thing they argue is the, United States has an extradition treaty with El Salvador and they are not complying with it. It's true that there is an extradition treaty, but in that sense it is also mentioned why it is not complied with because there are also more treaties by which the rights of minors are defended, and one of those is to be tried as gangs members minors, and United States does not guarantee us that they would be tried as minors but as adults, I mean the years that as a child should be must in prison. In conclusion, for anything negative that happens in El Salvador, El Faro always wants to put all the blame on booklet. Why is the information reserved? Because it allows the authorities to advance in the inquiries about certain cases, because in this way the leak of information is avoided and the accused aren't alerted so that they can escape. It is no longer a secret that independent journalism has direct contact with criminal structures, now there are many criminal lawyers who seek justice also. Is Naib booklet brainwashing us? It's funny that question, but I'll be direct, no. To none of us, because we see with evidence that the exception regime has worked. Something that did not happen with previous governments, and even, they were the ones who brainwashed us because they were the only ones who controlled what we saw on television, knowing that outside there was pure suffering and people dying of hunger. Those from Arena and the FMLN were never rivals, they really were allies but it was all a show to deceive the people. Right now we are going through misinformation by the opposition, to try to confuse us, but in their time they did nothing and only dedicated themselves to negotiating with gang members and giving weapons to gang members and children and stealing from the people. That is, why some Salvadorans are surprised that now we do have a good president, because they have spent more than 30 years accustomed to living with suffering because of previous governments. We must remove the fear of denouncing, only united can we make the gangs disappear. With previous governments we had never come down from the black list of the most violent countries in the world, but with this government we did. Was Bukla the first to make an exception regime? Not really, countries like Singapore had already done it, but his exception regime is more similar to that of Alberto Fujimori, former president of Peru. In Honduras they also made an exceptional regime a couple of years ago with former President Juan Orlando Hernandez, but it only lasted one month, which in at least a month Honduras stopped being in the first place of the most violent countries and dropped to third place, I know it wasn't much, but let's consider that they only took one month to do it and that Honduras is very big compared to El Salvador, so it makes sense that it hasn't gone down much in just one month. 
All those who have made this type of regime, have managed to reduce violence notoriously. I mentioned Honduras because many will say that the other countries were different from El Salvador and that is why it worked for them. But it turns out that Honduras has been similar to El Salvador and that it was working for it. Now, we Salvadorans have noticed that the exception regime has indeed worked and we no longer feel threatened as before with so much insecurity. The country still needs to be cleaned up, but it is not only the police's job but also ours to denounce. Many Salvadorans have suffered from so many deaths that have occurred, but they did not make noise about that before, only a few journalists who were not well known. Nor is it that all those who have suffered in El Salvador support Booklet, we should remove that belief, since I have not suffered at the hands of gang members, but I know that logically I should support him, because of the results it has given, and that there is no another way to eradicate gangs. We must understand something and it is that, human rights are inherent to the person whether he is a criminal or not, but, rights defenders forget the collective rights of the victims, which are more important than the rights of a criminal, therefore, their actions are denatured. And, finally, has the exceptional regime given results? He has certainly given it. Before, with territorial control, we had stopped being in the first place of the most violent countries, now with the exceptional regime we are even safer. This is what those pseudo-journalists cannot refute, that despite the fact that they accuse him of having agreed, with the gangs, they cannot prove what was said, since it is evident that this has not been the case. Why? Because the previous governments did agree with gangs, but we never stopped being in the first most dangerous countries in the world. So their accusations simply don't make sense. Additional fact, Bukla is not a communist as they want to paint him. I think it is logical. But some, foreigners fall into this fallacy. Learn more about the history of El Salvador and the life of Bukel by subscribing to my channel.